Um, yeah, so uh, welcome to the presentation. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the server-side Swift with IBM uh, Kitua with OpenShift. So uh, Swift is a programming language developed by Apple. Uh, Swift target mostly on Mac OS, iOS, watchOS, and tvOS. Swift is, Swift is really lightweight and fast, super fast. Latest version of Swift is Swift uh, 5.1. Um, back in the 2014, uh, when Swift initially got introduced, it's supposed to take over some of the responsibility for Objective-C. Uh, Objective-C is a legacy language for um, iOS. Um, so at that time, um, Apple come up and say, hey, Swift is the new way of developing iPhone apps and iPad apps. Um, it's a descendant, the next generation of Objective-C. The beauty of Swift is there's no pointer. You don't need to worry about uh, a memory allocation, um, memory management. Um, Swift is also a new functional programming language, right? You can pass a functional object into another function as a parameter. And as a matter of fact, Swift and Objective-C could coexist in any iOS app using the bridging header. And Swift also come with the uh, UI automation toolkit, the next code that allow you to record and um, generate automatically generate uh, auto, uh, automation Swift uh, 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 test code to test against your iOS app. Uh, Swift usually work in Xcode and also work in uh, VS Code in Linux. So it depends on your uh, computer, right? You can install Xcode or VS Code. Um, so let's talk about why, why we want to talk about this Swift server-side um, application. So one of the most common problem is that uh, iOS developer working on mobile client team do not understand, they only understand Swift and Objective-C, right? When the mobile client team needs to work on a Surface feature, a lot of times they don't have uh, any idea where to start and they need to wait for the Surface team to do the work for them. Most importantly, there were no share, co-sharing between the client team and the service team because of the different languages and different technology stack. Uh, team members were siloed. They either no front end or no back end, right? So, so they don't, don't also don't share the same release cadence. So in order for the client team to wait for service team to have a new feature come in, I, we need to wait for the next release, right? So where do we start? Um, if we could start sharing code and architecture between the client and Surface, that would solve some of the problem. Um, we could leverage Swift as a bridge, bridge to bridge against the client and Surface team, right? And also we can leverage some of the uh, nature of Swift language to make the backend Surface uh, more lightweight and faster. So this is how my IBM Kitua come into place. Kitua is an open source framework developed by IBM. Uh, back in the uh, 2015, uh, mobile developer could use uh, the Swift skill to build uh, backend web services, uh, supporting REST API, integrating with WebSocket and API, open API and databases. So you can think about in this picture, right? Kitua uh, bridged the gap between both the front end and back end. Um, and, and also looking at some of the uh, performance analysis from the IBM uh, website about Kitua, you can see that um, this is a chart about the performance of application. Um, the response time of Swift is amazing, right? It is comparing to Java, to JS, to Wubi, it has the fastest response time. And the memory usage, same thing, right? Swift has a really low memory usage comparing to Java, to to JavaScript and Ruby. And for, as far as for developer productivity, right, you can see that um, Swift is basically has the highest productivity and also has the highest performance in the app. So which make it a preferable language, right? Swift, lightweight, fast uh, performance, low memory usage, front end and back end uh, portability. Uh, so you think about if you manage a de development team, right? You could manage the, all the source code coming from the Swift Xcode project, right? It would deploy to the client on the iOS app, deploy to the Swagger API, uh, generate the Swagger documentation, deploy the service to Kitua, and Kitua, as I 
container deploy to OpenShift, right? So that's the beauty of using um, Swift Kitua. Everything comes from the single uh, point of truth from the same Swift project. Um, so as we said, open source Swift, um, Kitua is only just one of the framework coming out from open source Swift. Uh, Perfect, Vapor, and Servo Cell is also other framework that were there to support um, Swift, uh, server side Swift. So uh, Kitua is one of the more popular ones. So, so this is the Linux architecture of Swift. Um, so uh, this is the Swift one time. Um, so on the, on the, on the, based on Swift, we have the standard library, the foundation, the Swift foundation, and the dispatch. Right? So you can think about this as a Linux platform container. And then when we extend that into the server-side Swift, everything's the same except we, now we have a component called server API that support making API call through the, through the router, through the network, and talk to the uh, uh, Swift library. And um, as you see, you know, Apple Swift also have integration with Siri Kit, with uh, Apple Pay, with uh, augmented reality, with machine learning, and with the um, iTunes, right? So if we use uh, server-side Swift, we could get some of these features for free, especially Siri Kit. Um, I found it's really useful um, when I have my, I can have my Swift uh, uh, surface, talk to Siri, Siri can do the work for me and then send me a notification back to my surface. Um, talking about Swift package management, um, there, there are two choices. The first one is called CocoaPod. Uh, the second one is called Carfish. CocoaPod is uh, one of the more popular one, right? Uh, it has, it's a dependency manager for Swift and Objective-C. Uh, contains o over six, 69,000 libraries used by 3 million apps uh, help you scale your project if you go to cocopods.org you, you can find all the available library for Swift um, to use a CocoaPod it's very straightforward you start with a pod file um, you do pod init and then you add the um, dependency in this case Animal Fire Animal Fire is a dependency for making network call so if I need to make a HTTP call using Animal Fire, I can add pod, Animal Fire, and then a version number. And then after, after your pod file got in updated, you call pod install. And, and then you go to your Swift class and do import Animal Fire. Then you can start using the API and libraries. Um, creating the Swift project is also really uh, straightforward. The Kitua Swift project, um, First, you make a make a project file um, using, using the make dir directory uh, and then your project name. Um, then you go into that project and then you do, do a Swift package command. You do Swift, Swift package init, uh, we give it a type executable. And then you generate a package Swift file like this, right? So in your dependency block, um, you add a package that points to the IBM Kitua git URL. So that's the first step. Um, after that, you can start acting your HTTP endpoint. So in this case, uh, this is an example of setting up a HTTP get uh, endpoint using the router. You pass in the request response parameter. And then next, inside the next is a functional block, right? And then it's just basically doing a response dot send hello world. It send hello world back to your get, re get response. Um, so the next step, you hook it up to Kitua, you call the Kitua egg HTTP server, give it the route that you have identified in the earlier step, give it the port number, and then at the end you call Kitua.run. Then it will start up the, uh, the service for you in a container. So uh, this is another example of a get endpoint, right? So you can see the whole, the whole coding structure is a functional programming uh, syntax. Right, you, you pass in request response. Next would be the closure. In the closure, I'm going to do some business logic and then return the response. Um, the post uh, API also set up in a similar way, where you pass in the request response, do some business logic, and then call response.send and send back the payload for the, for the post response. Um, it also have um, uh, integration with the uh, uh, database. So I'm just showing a PostgreSQL connection here. Um, 
First, we call the Postgres SQL connection, create a pool, um, specify the host name, the port number, the database name, and then at the end, you can call uh, database default and start the database with that specific, specific pool. Creating a table is super straightforward. Right? Once you have a database object called book, you can call book.createTable async. And then once you have the table, then you can start creating object inside the table. Um, all you need is to pass in that closure, um, and then you can call uh, book.save and then pass in the completion handler. And that would create a object for you inside the, the, the table, inside the book table. Looking up an object is also in a very similar way, where you can call book.find and pass in the object ID and the completion handler. So um, to compile your uh, application, you do uh, swift.build. Uh, once it's built, it uh, generates an executable inside the .build folder. You go to build.build build, debug my project. And then you can open up the localhost 8090 and see the, um, the web page that you just created for your Kitua application. So this is the high level cloud um, history, right? So in the past, we started with a data center. Then people migrated to infrastructure as a service. Then people started doing platform as a service. And today we kind of go into a serverless architecture, right? So, so this is a, a, a high level architecture of a typical microservice architecture. You have a business data abstraction at the lowest layer. And then you have some sort of data services on top of the data abstraction, right? Surface layer is where you would build the Kitua surface, right? Uh, the microservice, the standalone surface. So then on top of the surface layer, you have the orchestration layer that make different uh, surface call in an order, right? Synchronously or asynchronously, doing the retry block, doing the exception handling, right? That all happen in the orchestration layer. And then at the topmost level, you have the monitoring and event management, right? Um, so, so how do we apply this into our Kitua OpenShift framework, right? So why do we want to use OpenShift? OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes, um, optimized for continuous uh, application CI/CD pipeline, support multiple tenants, uh, contain developer and operation-centric tooling, and on top of Kubernetes, enable rapid development, you know, application scaling, lifecycle management. So this is an example of a uh, OpenShift architecture that. Developer check in code into Git. Git push code into Jenkins. Jenkins run the, the, the deployment CI CD pipeline. At the end, it would deploy to the OpenShift cluster based on the uh, configuration. Right? You have a cluster for development, a cluster for test, and a cluster for production. So, um, so how could we use OpenShift for Kitua? So OpenShift has a S2I source to image procedure that basically can run a Docker image by injecting the application source code into a Docker image and assemble, and, a, and assemble a new Docker image. Using the new Docker image, it can incorporate the base image and the built-in source code, and then it will be ready for deployment. And also S2I process support incremental build, and, we, and you can also reuse the previous build artifact based on versioning. Um, so going back to Kitua, right? Um, so first, where do we get the Docker image for Kitua? You can get that from um, IBM dot, IBM com slash Kitua uh, with the latest version. Once you get the uh, image, you can tag the image, uh, push the Kitua image into your into your uh, your Docker registry stream in OpenShift. So the command to uh, start right after you have the Kitua um, Docker image, you do OC new app, specify an app name, specify the Docker image pointing to the registry that you just uh, uh, push your, 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 your Kitua uh, image to, right? And after that, the deployment is ha happen automatically. And you can do OC get pod to uh, get the list of uh, uh, pods associated with the deployment. Um, so we talk about image stream, um, could be used to update deployment when a newer version of the image is created. Um, image stream create a Docker image identified by tag. Uh, OpenShift can build and deploy surface and receive notification from image stream. Um, 
So for you, uh, you can also do OC import image, right? Specify the Kitua image stream, right? And then, um, <clears throat> and then after you import the image stream to, to your open uh, to your uh, OpenShift namespace, you can start creating the um, the app also using the OC new app command and specify the dash i as a Kitua image stream. Uh, so this is the link for the Kitua tutorial. Um, so I went through some of the very high level how to do Kitua, but this link can talk about how to do, you know, creating a, a to-do list in the back end, authentication, session management, template, SSL, TLS, uh, CGI, and how to ha handle request and response type handler, right? So this contain all the um, documentation, uh, so most of the uh, learning that you need to learn about Kitua. Um, so as a matter of fact, we have a client Capital One, who is using Kitua for, for their project. Uh, so Kitua HTTP, HTTPS server uh, configured to run on their iOS devices and their simulator. So we have a record API and a payback API to track the service request and response using Kitua framework. Um, that was a really um, uh, interesting project and it's uh, the, the first time we are using Kitua in, in, in the consulting business. Um, so um, also, how do, where do we start from developing Kitua application? You can go to developer.ibm.com, technologies, Swift, right? That will talk about Kitua. And these are the GitHub example. So uh, we have five minutes left. I'm going to show you a quick demo how, how this works um, in OpenShift. So we talk about um, so we talk about how, um, how, how, how the uh, deployment works. So I deployed this into our OpenShift cluster um, with Kitua. And you can see that um, the, um, the container is really IBM com Kitua with the, with the hash code of the, of the image tag, right? So all I did is running the OC new app command and specify the Kitua image stream. Uh, once it's deployed, um, you can start uh, doing some of this, AP, uh, this API call. So I have Postman up here. Um, so the first one is really a get call, and you can see that this is pointing to the URL of my OpenShift cluster. I have a get call uh, API call called hello. So when I make a HTTP get call, it send me back the hello Kitua starter, right? The post call, this is a, a, an example of a post call that points to the OpenShift cluster. Again, the same API endpoint, hello. And then when you do a send request with the post call, you get back the receive a post request. Um, this is an example of uh, uh, returning a JSON object. So I have an uh, API endpoint that calls uh, JSON. Um, so it will return, return me a JSON object, you know, company name IBM, framework Kitua, and location and all that. Um, and we also have a health check endpoint, right? So, so each microservice would have its own health check endpoint. So this is also done with Kitua Swift. So when I make a get call, it will return me a status up and then the timestamp and the detail. Um, so this is also an example of, um, so when I go to my Kitua application, when I go to the root URL, I will see welcome to Kitua as a starting page on the IBM cloud. Um, yeah, so, so basically that's, um, that, that's all I got for this presentation and I have uh, maybe take one, yeah, five minutes. Okay, five minutes for Q&A and you guys have any question about Kitua that you want to learn more or you have any other s the specific question you want to, you want to uh, ask about Kitua? I do have a question. Go ahead. Really fast. Yeah, yeah lightweight. Lightweight. Yeah, it's really nice. But um, the images are based on Ubuntu. Do you guys you know, are planning on something like to migrate to UBI 8 or you know, to help or anything? Because uh, our product and our base image, you know, is a middleware thing, and, and, I, and I consider this technology a middleware. 
interesting. Uh, I missed the, the, the beginning of your presentation, so I don't know if it is uh, IBM thing or Red Hat thing, but yeah. is, if you are planning to bring to, to Red Hat, and um, are you planning to migrate your VMs to UBI 8? That's a really good point. Uh, actually, yes. That, okay. So, so the the question is, uh, when we are uh, talking about bringing um, Kitua into Red Hat, and um, we we may need to deal with supporting the image for for uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, version eight. Um, so yes, uh, IBM has planned to uh, support and my uh, and 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 support some of this newer image, and it will be available. Um, in the uh, in the Docker image repository for download sometime this year. Yes, yeah, this is one of the uh, bigger initiative, especially now Red Hat is part of IBM, right? So one of the, the push is to, like, it, it's how, how do we bring to, uh, the IBM technology together with the Red Hat technology? Like well, Kitua is just one example. Um, but you can see, you know, Kitua can bring in and work nicely with OpenShift, but at the same time, yes, you know, some, some of this configuration may need to, you know the the image and um, the you know so, so some of these you know low, lower layer configuration would need to be updated to support more on the uh, on the Red Hat Linux. Yes. Okay, so you are bringing all the users to us, or you, I mean, you know, this is IBM thing and not Red Hat, but we use like the base image for Red Hat. But at the same time, you know, because there's a lot of IBM thing. Yeah. You know, in, in the middle, but. If you are going to bring this to Red Hat, are you planning to know, this is Red Hat thing now and put it about the game? Because, you know, for marketing and to say, oh, we have a sweet um, framework of running on the ship to provide by Red Hat, it's a big thing. No? Yeah. That, that, that's what I mean. Not the technical point of view, but in the marketing point of view, yes. you know, the brain in this kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, will be, you know, mixing things or actually you guys are bringing to Red Hat this time. Yeah, so, so the, uh, the question is, are we going to bring this technology into Red Hat uh, as a technology, or are we going to mix you know, between Red Hat and IBM? So I believe the direction would be bringing in into Red Hat, as IBM's commitment is keeping Red Hat as a, a standalone you know, uh, uh, entity within IBM. Um, so so um, some of this will be, you know, how, how do we bring, you know, bringing in some of the technology from IBM to Red Hat, improve the integration, uh, being able to um, uh, support the technology, right, with, with, without showing two different names, right? Also from the client's yeah. perspective, a lot of time, oh, they are they asking, hey, you know, is it an IBM thing or Red Hat yeah. thing, right? So we try to avoid that confusion, right? So, so you know, as you see, OpenShift is going to be Red Hat, um, Kitua is going to be IBM, but you know, yes, again, we, there will be more integration, more people working together, more team uh, sharing code together to make the product more successful. Yeah, that's yes. It's confusing, yeah, yeah exactly. It is. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's not only confusing, it will yeah. make sure that a lot of people won't do it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Won't, they, they won't do it. They won't um, use it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If Swift is open source, if yeah. you know this kind of stuff, you know, if it yeah. brings everything to Red Hat yeah. and forget about the Ubuntu thing, then yeah. it will help to get it out. So, it will be a very nice thing, and I guess you guys will see even more attention on this project. That's just yeah. how I'm actually yeah. architecting. I don't know if you are looking into this, but please. So yeah. we have Swift running in Fedora now, yeah. and it's as simple as finding a maintainer that will do the work. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll find something. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be working together more. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah as you said, you know, Swift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I noticed that. Too. Yeah. 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 Because it's running the on the server side, so it can be deployed in any architecture. Yeah. So which architecture are supported with the Swift compiler? The Swift compiler, what architecture is it supported? Um, well, it supported the uh, well. The, you, you're asking about the opera uh, operating system architecture. Yeah. Red Hat, yeah. Red Hat. Uh, well, I, I tried it on my uh, local Red Hat uh, um, laptop, and it sub it works for me. So my Swift compiler works okay. But I mean, um, I'm running a x uh, 64 bit. Um, and and uh, yeah, Swift as, as I said, you know, Swift originally developed by Apple. It support more on the MacBooks, iOS, in, OS, Mac OS environment, 
But Linux, yes, it, there, there are still uh, some hiccup that needs to be fixed, right? But um, yeah, but overall, there, there are additional documentation I can send out for, to you guys, and you can take a look. Yes. Uh, so, dispatch on Linux is that equivalent to GCD on Mac and iOS? That is correct. Uh, similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, but I, I can send you more information and, and, and uh, tell you more. Okay, so we, we are done with the presentation. Thank you again for coming, and uh, please you know, send me an email if you have a question about Swift. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.